In this video, I'm going to show you how you could use the pandas library to perform data wrangling and data processing on tabular data sets in Python. Let me know in the comment section whether you find this pandas tutorial video helpful. So maybe I'll expand this into a multi-part series. And so without further ado, we're starting right now. All right, and so let's load up this particular Jupyter Notebook or Colab Notebook, which I have already provided the links to in the video description. And so this is the data wrangling with pandas. So you'll be learning how you could use pandas library in Python in order to data wrangle or perform data processing of your data set. And so let's get started. So the first thing here is you want to import the pandas library. And so at default, you could use import pandas as PD, which is the common way to import the pandas library. And some of the functionalities that we'll be using in this particular video is also making use of the NumPy library. So we're going to import NumPy as NP as well. And so let's have a look at the pandas data structure before we go further. So pandas allows us to work with tabular data set. So tabular data set is a table, data table. So you have columns and then you have rows. And so let's have a look at the pandas data structure here. So I have color coded the various elements of the pandas data structure into the three colors that you can see here. So at a high level, you see the pandas data frame explained here. And then the panda series explained here at the bottom part. So the pandas data frame is comprised of three components, the row names, the column names, and also the values. So I have already dissected it here to the left part is the row name. So you take only the blue color out and then the column names is the first pink color here. It has been taken out. So that's the column names. And then only the yellow portion is the data values. So if you combine all of that, you get the row names and also the column names along with the data values. So collectively, they are known as the pandas data frame. And so the row names and the column names are the index, which is the third type of data structure of pandas. And let's hop on to the panda series. So each row or each column will be a panda series. So you can see here that panda series is one dimension. It could be the row or it could be the column. And the pandas data frame is two dimensional, right? It has the rows and it has the columns. And if you take the rows from the pandas data frame, you get this panda series. And so the index will be the row names. And if you take the panda series from the column, then the index will be the column name. Okay. And so I've provided more information on the descriptive properties of the panda series, panda data frame and the index here. All right. And so let's start by creating our first few pandas objects. So panda series. So I have already commented here the various type of panda series that you could create. And so let's uncomment it so that we could see the resulting output. So creating a panda series is as simple as using PD dot series and then the opening and the closing parenthesis. And then as input, we'll use a list of values. Okay, so we have an import right here. So we'll run this too. So if you're using it locally, you want to pip install pandas as well. But if you're using Colab, it comes pre-installed. Let's run this again. All right, and therefore you have a panda series. So let me type from scratch. It's pd.series, opening and closing parenthesis. And then you want to put in your list of values. So a Python list like this. And then shift enter or hit on the play button and then you get the list here, right? So your list could also be strings. It could be a list of strings like red, blue, green. So that could also be a list. And then, and then you convert it into a panda series using the pd.series function. Okay. So I'll delete this. Let's proceed further. So now let's create a panda data frame. All right, and so in the above here, you have already seen that the index values are integers right here. This is the index value, zero, one, two, three, four. These are the index values, so they are integers. But then we'll provide you with some more information in subsequent code cell, how you could also add labels to it. So stay tuned for that in just a moment. 
All right, and so let's create a pandas data frame from a NumPy array. So here, we're going to create a NumPy array, which is the first line here. And then we're going to assign it to the n1 variable. And then we're going to create a data frame by using pd.dataframe. And then as input value, we're going to use n1. And then finally, we're going to display it by typing out df1 so that we see the contents of the data frame. There you go. So this is the data frame. You can see that it is a tabular table here. So let me type in n1, the array. So this is the array. And then we've converted into a pandas data frame by using pd.dataframe. So as you can see here, creating a pandas data frame is as simple as using the pd.dataframe function on the array that we have created. Pandas index, okay. So I mentioned earlier on that we could add meaningful labels to the columns. So let's do that. So here, pandas series. So if we're going to add the name here, let's run it. So you can see that aside from just saying pd.series and then l2, which is the list two, we also specify it using the name function, name equals to a. And so you can see here that the name became a. So let's run it without specifying the name. Let's delete that. Let's see what happens. You see that it also runs and create the panda series, but then there's no name here, right? Only the data type. All right, and so let's create the pandas data frame with the names. So firstly, we're going to create an n2 array using the np.array function, as we have already done previously. And then we're going to assign it to the pd.dataframe function to create our data frame. And in addition to that, we're going to name it. We're going to create the columns name. Let me comment that out first. Let me show you. There you go. You have a, b, c. So without the column names, it would be integers 0, 1, 2. But with the column names, we could add meaningful labels to it. So let me comment this out and then I'll run df3 here. And now you could also name the roles as well, right? Index here are the roles. Why don't we say r1 for row 1, r2 for row 2, r3 for row 3. Okay, there you go. All right, and so what if we wanted to add the names here? So similar to r1, r2, r3, but it's just copying the contents from the prior data frame. And then we're using names of individuals and then we're adding it to the index. So this is doing it in retrospect. So you can see that we're using df4.index and then we're assigning a list of names to it. And then we have already added the list. So what we've done here is we've copied the contents from DF3 and then we're adding it at a later time, the index name or the row names. And so we've done it using the index function. Okay. And aside from using NumPy arrays as input for creating the data frame, we could also create data frames from a Python dictionary. So let's say that we have a dictionary specify using the D variable here, and then we have a, and then we have a list of values, and then we have B, and then we have a list of values, and then C, and then a list of values. And then we're using this D variable as input for the data frame. And then let's have a look. And now we have a data frame, right? So A here is the column A, B here is the column B, C here is the column C. And so therefore here is essentially the same as using the index function and also Oh, what it meant was it's the same as using the columns function here. So specifying it like this as a dictionary is essentially the same as running this df2 function, where you specify the name of the NumPy array, and then you specify the name of the columns. And so as already mentioned, you could conveniently create a pandas data frame using dictionary as an input. And so the column names are specified here. And then the data values are here in the list. And then we could add the index to it also. Or we could also add it retrospect df1.index. Let's run it. We could either do it like this. Or we could do like this df1 index equals and then we add the list. Like that. 
right? So there's more than one way of doing it, using a dictionary, using a list, using a NumPy array. So it's totally up to you. So choose a way that resonates with you and do try it out and let me know how it goes. Thank you so much for watching until the end of the video. And please drop a fire emoji in the comment section if you wish this far and support the channel by liking the video, subscribing if you haven't already, and also make sure to hit on notifications for updates on the latest release of the future video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science and please enjoy the journey.